If you were going to make a list of some of the worst sins, I'm sure you would think of things like pride and greed and lust. But I'm sure you probably wouldn't include today's topic at the top of that list. Today we are in our series called Seven Deadly Sins, and we've already looked at a few of these. But today we're going to talk about gluttony. Let's start with the definition. Gluttony is an unhealthy obsession over food or drink. And so today we're not just talking about food, but it can also uh, mean alcohol as well. And let's start with this. God gave us food for our enjoyment, but he also gave us boundaries. Let's look at one of Jesus' miracles. When he fed the 5,000, it says in Matthew 14, 20, they all ate as much as they wanted, and afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. And it's interesting to think that even uh, the people of Jesus' day actually thought of him as a glutton. In Luke 7, 34, the Son of Man, on the other hand, feasts and drinks, and you say he's a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and sinners. So enjoying food isn't bad. Even Jesus let people have their fill. He ate and drank with his disciples. That was part of his fellowship. So it was a good thing. And yet God did give us boundaries. If we look at Genesis chapter 2, way back in the garden in the beginning, it says, But the Lord God warned him, You may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. This is a great example that God wanted his people to enjoy and live in abundance, but yet he sets a boundary because he knows what's good for us. You see, here's the thing. Gluttony is a false pathway to comfort, using food and drink to satisfy a deeper craving in all of us. People who struggle with the deadly sin of gluttony um, use food like an addict uses drugs. You see, addicts use um, drugs or alcohol to be able to um, cover up some kind of feeling or emotion that they have inside. They have a, a deep need inside of them that only God can fill. In my own life, that is what I did. I struggled with addiction for many years, and I used it to escape the emotions that I was feeling and the lack of uh, spiritual health and emotional health that I had in my life. And so maybe for you, it's not drugs, but you're using food to cover up or escape the feelings that you are struggling with. Author Graham Tomlin writes, food is not a neutral thing, and in some complex way, our attitudes to food are all bound up with our spiritual and emotional health. People back in Jesus' day were so focused on food that Jesus would often use the analogy of bread to show them what they really needed was not some outside substance, but something internal. And that's why Jesus said this in John 6, 51, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever, and this bread which I will offer so the world may live is my flesh. So that deeper craving in all of us isn't just something external, but it really is only solved through Jesus himself. So here's the practical takeaway if you're struggling with gluttony. The antidote to gluttony is both fasting and feasting, putting food in the proper place in our lives. Ultimately, we need to find our satisfaction in Jesus, and he showed us in his life that Fasting is a good thing. It, it's for us to be able to rely on God and rely on the spiritual things rather than just on the physical. And so sometimes it might just be fasting, you know, for a period of time. Maybe it's for just a certain thing, something that you're overdoing a lot in your life. We have more on fasting on PursueGod.org if you want to look more into that. But here's a verse that brings it into proper perspective. In 1 Corinthians six twelve, it says, You say, I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. And even though I am allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. So fasting helps you develop the, the spiritual fruit of self-control to keep you from being a slave to anything like Paul is saying here. But remember, it's not just about fasting, but when we feast, we can also keep food in the proper place of our lives. That's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, 
So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So what Paul is saying here is that God wants all of us, and that includes what we eat and what we drink. And so that's why gluttony is really one of the seven deadly sins, because it keeps us from putting Jesus in the proper place in our lives.